Thank you for joining us in today's Connection Point End Times News Briefing Podcast. Hope you're all doing fantastic and having a wonderful and blessed day. In this podcast, again, this is where we talk about uh, world news and events as it relates to Bible prophecy. Uh, plus, we talk about other important subjects related to our walk with the Lord. Before we get into some news headlines, let me share with you just a brief word of exhortation. When we go through difficult and tough times, and if we've spent any time at all in the Word of God, that tough time is going to be like a magnet that just draws us closer to the Lord. And the things that we read, the things that we're spending that time with the Lord Jesus Christ, having that love relationship with Him, He will get us through. And nothing that's going to happen in the future that's going to catch the Lord by surprise. And there's nothing that will happen that he cannot help his children to work through. So rather than uh, spending our time trying to figure out and worrying and being anxious or or even try to figure out all the, the nuances of what will happen or could happen, we should spend at least as much time getting to know the Lord better, stay in his word. This is how we get rooted and grounded in the Lord. This is what creates that foundation in our lives, the stability and balance in our lives. Amen? Now to some news headlines. To start off in the news in Israel, again, Netanyahu rejects Biden's ambiguity. So the Golan Heights was and will remain a part of Israel is the title of this headline. And it's only after three weeks it's already been clear that Israel, the most uh, important and faithful ally of the U.S., uh, cannot expect the same consideration for its uh, security concerns as it receives from President Trump, even in critical areas like the Golan Heights. An interview on CNN on Monday night, the newly appointed Secretary of State expressed uh, their support for Israel, but refused to acknowledge Israel's sovereignty over the critical Golan Heights, a status that was recognized by the Trump administration in 2019. So as we're going to see very clearly that the U.S. is starting to and will uh, continue to turn its support and backs on Israel, even on a matter of, say, for example, the Golan Heights, uh, which we knew was going to happen under the Biden administration, which is exactly what Obama did. So it's uh, what Obama's administration does, but all to a whole nother level, as we're going to see other things taking place. But uh, we, we definitely can see the Biden administration is not really fully supporting Israel like President Trump did. Uh, so you're going to see the uh, blessings going to be withheld from a, a nation, as uh, we see in uh, Genesis 12. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So, so we're going to see the decline of uh, the U.S. very rapidly. Every time a, a U.S. administration turns its back or does something against Israel, you see there's disasters that do happen uh, on a frequent basis. Uh, just one of those correlation doesn't mean it's always the case in that in that way, but it's one of those, uh, if you're to look at some of the points uh, and policies uh, over you know, the last several decades or whatever long, you're going to notice that taking place. Also in dealing with the Middle East, uh, according to this report, and it's dealing with the Iran deal, Iran foreign minister tells Biden to rejoin the nuclear deal within two weeks before stance hardens. So this came out of the Times of Israel, where top diplomat of the uh, foreign minister of uh, Iran uh, was encouraging Biden to act swiftly to return to the 2015 nuclear agreement and end sanctions on the country by February 21st, after which the Iranian government stance is set to harden. The Trump administration reimposed sanctions in 2018 after it pulled out of the uh, accord uh, aimed at curtailing Iran's nuclear program. In an interview with the Iran foreign minister said recently that parliament legislation forces the government to toughen its stance on the U.S. if sanctions are not eased in two weeks. Uh, back in December, Iran parliament, led by hardliners, passed legislation uh, set for a two-month deadline for erasing of um, easing of sanctions. Time is running out for the Americans, uh, both because of the parliament bill and the election atmosphere that will follow the Iran's new year. So Iran new year begins March 21st. 
the foreign minister also appointed the upcoming presidential elections in um, uh, coming up in June uh, in Iran. And so if the hardline uh, president is elected, uh, it may further jeopardize the deal. And if he appears to have suggested in the interview, uh, the more that uh, America procrastinates, the more it will lose. It will appear that Mr. Biden and Minister doesn't want to rid itself of Trump's failed legacy, which it wasn't a failed legacy. It's one of the best foreign policies in U.S. history. Uh, he goes on to say that we don't need to return to the negotiating table. It's America that needs to find a ticket to come to the table. So what we're seeing here in this situation, Iran is now dictating its terms and demands upon the U.S. and upon this uh, particular um, um, treaty that they're trying to have with the, some of these nations. Uh, they want the U.S. to stop the sanctions so they can have more economic support, so they can have more money for their nuclear program. That's their end goal because they want to wipe the U.S. and Israel off the face of the map, which we know is not going to happen from a prophetic standpoint. But this is their goal. This is their agenda. Uh, but you can see how the agenda of the Iran regime is just going to push America. And again, because you have a, a puppet in the White House who is no backbone, who has dementia, he'll go along with it. Uh, so it's just a very scary situation for the world having Biden as president of the U.S. Uh, and he'll give in to these demands of the nuclear deal. On to another topic, as we've seen in the last year and more so in the last several months, the censorship and free speech is under greater attack than ever before. Uh, according to uh, several reports, it talks about how uh, free speech in America and around the world is rapidly erasing by really the New World Order masters. And uh, so in case uh, you have kind of uh, been tuned out, again, the, we're seeing uh, from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, uh, all the mainstream media, uh, from a technical, uh, all the uh, Google, um, you know, Microsoft, they're, they're all going after free speech and uh, censorship. Uh, go to any news site and you'll find headlines uh, like Facebook censorship, female professor citing critique, uh, toxic femininity. Microsoft suspends donations to GOP members who objected to election results and a whole host of other, you know, um, stories like that. Uh, We've seen how big tech uh, has all this power, you know, uh, to really uh, go after any person or any organization. And so basically what you're learning from all this is as long as you go along with the lies, the media or the, the government, what they're telling you, you'll be fine. Don't speak up. Don't share the truth. Uh, and, and, and again, if you're conservative, they'll attack you. Uh, so basically, every person just need to cover their eyes, plug their ears, cover their mouth, and you'll be fine in this new society that the left uh, the Democrats, the Labor Party, depends on what, you're, what country you're from, uh, the globalists, the, the New World Order puppets, you know. And, and this, is again, is a big, perfect setup for the eventual one world government, which will be led by the Antichrist. So things are rapidly progressing to that uh, model. So if you're a conservative, you're a Christian, you're going to get attacked. You, they don't want people to think for themselves. They don't want to hear the truth. Uh, and, and also speaking of a, a one world government, perhaps the UN will be a huge player in it as we see uh, President Biden's next move where he wants to rejoin the UN group of human rights abusers. So they plan to rejoin the Human Rights Council reversing Trump's withdrawal because it was a disastrous plan. The UN is horrific. Uh, in its policy. Same thing with NATO, uh, which is the reasons why uh, Trump was uh, pulling out of those things, because it uh, it really doesn't help countries. It's just a, a, an organization just for political uh, agendas, for the most part. Yes, it does do good from time to time, but overall, it is a political-run organization. And so we're, we're seeing just... Uh, um, Again, with the Biden administration just going along with uh, you know this uh, new world order plan, um, and again, part of the reason why Trump withdrew uh, from the Human Rights Council uh, because of its bias against Israel and lack of reform. So those are some of the the key ideas there. But um, you know, we're we're just seeing just this uh, 
um, power of the globalist in play from the WHO, uh, NATO, uh, and of course the United Nations. On to another topic and the signs of the times uh, as we see earthquakes in various places so far in the last uh, month uh, in 11 days or so since the, the year started there's been over 1200 earthquakes 4.0 and above two have been 7.0 to 7.9 there have been 19 6.0 to uh, 6.9 so it's kind of already in a record setting year uh, just on sunday there was a 6.0 earthquake in the philippines uh, creating some damage uh, there the tremor was recorded around noon on sunday around 7 uh, about 12:20 uh, p.m uh, local time in a shallow depth about 10 kilometers below the the surface uh, so we're seeing you know moderate uh, infrastructure uh, to heavy damage to the buildings and other infrastructure there so and again that's what you're going to see around the world as more earthquakes are going to shake uh, the world uh, just one of those signs of the times yes there's always been earthquakes but not the frequency and magnitude that we're seeing today Onto another issue in dealing with a court case. Again, there's been a lot of court cases going on lately from the stupid uh, impeachment trial to uh, churches that are going to court because of their gathering uh, as a fellowship. And uh, there is a Supreme Court that strikes down California indoor worship ban. So there was a, a ban that you couldn't meet indoors, although quite a few churches were meeting indoors. It kind of was depending on some of the uh, different um, counties uh, that were allowing them to. Um, but we're seeing just that hard line that people couldn't worship, but they can do all these other things. Uh, so they were allowed to go to retail stores, hair salons, nail salons, Hollywood studios open, but they couldn't have church. And so uh, there was this um, court case that, that was uh, uh, ruling uh, that uh, churches can meet uh, the only bad side to this particular case that they couldn't sing and worship, which is just silly anyways. And so we're seeing that uh, it was it was good uh, victory for the church that they should and 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 can meet uh, as a congregation and not worry about uh, being fined or hassled by the government. And then lastly, uh, we see this tragic legislation here in Australia that was uh, passed a bill that will considerably intensify uh, conflict between religious freedom and individual choice and identity politics. Uh, and it might even become a model uh, for laws in other um, places around the world. And, and and so one of the issues that's brought up again, this if someone asks a, a uh, individual, a pastor, a priest, or a Christian friend to pray for them uh, that their sexual desire or gender dysphoria might be changed you know that that pastor or priest or friend runs the risk of committing a criminal offense presumably this also applies to parents praying for their children so this whole issue of conversion therapy using psychological and uh, spiritual interventions attempt to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity uh, again it's been controversial uh really in the u.s it's also here in in australia um but you know if someone comes up to you and says you know i'm struggling with this and you know you know that god's created you as a male and female because there's only two genders there uh and if you're struggling with one area you're just praying for victory uh, to you know um do what the bible tells you to do uh that you know, you could be fined, that you could be imprisoned. It's a criminal offense just by um, praying for that person. You know, praying for those uh, areas of, of, of person's life that they're struggling. And again, most of these parliament people, they don't believe in God. So, they're, so why would this be uh, an issue to them? And so we're seeing more and more in society uh, and legislative government and leaders that are clamping down on truth and religious freedom. Uh, they're really going against science as well. If they're so-called believers in science, then then you'd believe the truth. There's only two genders, you know, uh, and this is how God has created us, male and female, etc. Uh, but there's going to be this push even harder uh, on their agenda on people, uh, which in their minds is okay. 
you know so they have a double standard it's okay for them but it's not okay for people to hear the other side or to or for example even on the issue of evolution versus creation they only want to be taught the one side instead of there is a creator you know that created the heavens and the earth that is a another uh, thing that uh, is not taught in schools and so but also going to realize that when you have a very liberal society and politics, it only brings destruction to a nation or to society. It, it's a downward spiral. It will never end. It will eventually collapse because it will come to ruin uh, because uh, there's a no-win situation with some of these situation, uh, these um, policies uh, that uh, is being implemented. And this is why it's so important for <clears throat> Christians to rise up, uh, to make our voices known to speak the truth to more so importantly uh, share the gospel if we can see good solid christians and conservatives in places of leadership and government positions elected into office it would make a radical difference in society in the nation again when you have conservatives running a country it's it's so much better off you know because they believe in the constitution they believe in moral values um, now on the other hand we know that there is going to be this one world government everything's pushing toward that way which every state every nation will eventually go with and implement so this is kind of uh we know it's going to happen but we still need to do everything that we can to make a difference until our time is up or until the rapture happens amen that's it for today's update until next time god bless